moving away from conflicts and contestations over nature in today's class we will discuss governing common pool resources in this class we will discuss what are common pool resources and how common pool resources can be governed in a more effective and efficient manner the core objective of today's class is to understand the common scenario and to explore why problems emerge in governing the commons we'll also try to explore the possibility of evolving common property regimes as a solution to the problems of common scenario after successfully completing this module you will be able to explain the problems of common pool resources or common pool natural resources and devise possible solutions to for governance of these resources you will also be able to identify the attributes of successful common property regimes and you will also be able to explain how resources can be governed in a better manner with with significant benefit to the local communities who depend upon these resources for their survival needs and for their livelihood purposes some of the basic questions that we will discuss in today's class are like what is common pool resources and what is common scenario why problems arise in common what are the possible solutions what are the successful attributes of successful common property regimes in today's class so we will focus on three topics to begin with we will make a conceptual clarification of common scenario or what are common pool resources then we'll discuss the problems that emerge in common scenario or in other words as most of the natural resources exist in the form of common pool resources what are the possible problems that emerge while governing these resources and in the third part of today's class we will discuss what may be considered as successful attribute or successful characteristics of a common property regime in other, or in other words what are the basic characteristics of a scenario where commons or common pool resources can be managed in a more successful efficient and and in a sustainable manner as we know that most of the natural resources exist in the form of common pool resources and local communities so let us begin this class with a conceptual clarification of common scenario or common pool resources as we have discussed in the previous class resources can be classified a two perspective that is whether exclusion is possible or difficult or whether resources are highly excludable or exclusion is difficult and whether resources are subtractible or not to make it simple we can classify resources based on whether we can exclude others restrict others from using the resource and when joint use happens or when more than two people or two individuals share a resource whether that resource become less and less or whether resource becomes subtracted so based on these two angles or based on these two perspectives we may identify four types of resources let's look at this picture to have a clear understanding of what are common pool resources and what is common scenario as you can see in this picture commons are those specific kind of resources which are as we can see in this picture commons are those specific resources which may be characterized by low excludability and high subtractibility which means that commons are a kind of resources where exclusion is difficult you can't exclude the other from sharing the resource and once joint use begins or once people start sharing a resource then the total availability of the resource gets subtracted or in other words when more and more people share a particular resource each individual's share of the resource or each individual's extraction of the resource gets reduced or gets limited so let us take some examples to understand what are commons and what are common pool resources consider this example of village pond let's take three ponds in one of the pond there is a private owner or in other words an individual or a household owns that pond so let us take this example of the village pond in the first scenario there is a village pond and an individual or let's say for example an household owns that pond or in other words the ownership right of the pond rests with a concerned person or a particular individual or a household so in this case the household has the ownership right the use right as well as the decision making right or in other words all the three important property rights are vested in one particular individual or household and the household is in a position or the individual is in a position to take some conclusive decisions about it some judicious decisions about the pond how much resources from to extract from that let's say for example how much fish to catch from that pond which can ensure sustainability that the household can decide the household can decide that in a judicious manner because the pond is not shared 
by anyone the household can exclude other because here exclusion is easy and there is no possibility of joint use people are not sharing so in this kind of scenario which are mostly private property sustainability is ensured because there is a clear cut strong robust institutional mechanism which can ensure protection of the resource or which can ensure sustainable extraction of benefits from the resource let's consider another example now again consider the example of or another kind of village water body in this example let's say that the state owns the pond or the pond is owned by by the state devolves or the management right of the pond has been devolved the management right of the pond to a particular agency and the agency can decide who can catch fish from that who cannot do that and the agency also has the right to monitor whether the rules are being followed or violated so in this case also extraction from the water body or extraction from the pond is done in a judicious manner because there is an agency which can monitor those rules and which can put some sanction or which can put some punishment if the rules are violated so in this scenario also that sustainability is guaranteed so these two scenarios that we discuss represent the private resources and the public resource or the state property and the private property so in between these two kind of examples let's consider the third example which is perhaps more important for today's class the third example that i would like to give you is again another kind of village pond or water body where there is no specific clear cut ownership right in other words there is no specific individual or household which owns the pond and public has the use right over it or in other words the pond is open to the public to to catch fish from that to use the water for irrigation purposes or to use the water for their day to day requirement this is the perfect example for a common scenario or perfect example for a common pool resource because here resource is being shared by many more than one individual or household are sharing the common pond the village pond and when more and more people are sharing the pond the share for each individual or the unit that for the each individual is getting reduced let's say there is a specific amount of fish in the pond and when many people share the same fish obviously the amount of fish available for each one will start get reducing so when more and more people join to share the resource obviously each person's individual share will get reduced and this is the perfect example of a common scenario where exclusion is difficult no one can exclude the other person from using the resource and once the joint use begins resource start subtracting so when let's say there are two fishermen who are sharing the pond maybe they will have catch but when another fisherman is added another is added or let's say when 10 15 20 or 100 of fishermen share the same pond and the total amount of fish available is same it is quite obvious that each individual share or the unit that each individual extract from the common pool will get reduced so therefore common scenario are a kind of resource where exclusion becomes difficult and joint use involves subtraction of the resource and most of our natural resources exist in this form whether it is forest whether it is water body whether it is grazing land whether it is village common land most of these natural resources exist in this kind of scenario or exist in this form of resource where people cannot exclude the other so joint use is an inevitable phenomenon obviously resources will be jo jointly used will be shared by many and when many people start sharing the resource without any kind of institutional arrangement without any kind of rules and and regulations who can withdraw how much resources ultimately resources begin to degrade or resources begin to be minimized so let's understand why problem arises in common scenario like we discussed that perhaps these kind of problems doesn't arise in the case of a private property these kind of problems do not arise in case of a state property but why is it that in common scenario where many people share a resource these kind of problems arise we need to understand that since more than one individual share the resource it becomes obvious that the rational choice of each individual will be to maximize the individual profit or individual resource extraction so in this kind of scenario there is no incentive for any individual or no incentive for any household to take decisions which are collectively beneficial so therefore there is no incentive for for judicious use of the resource 
and uncontrolled resource extraction will ultimately lead to problems like free riding, overuse, and degradation of the resource. So, therefore, the main problem in common scenario or in common pool resources is how to coordinate the action of individuals who are sharing the resource. Since more than one individual are sharing the resource, the central problem is how to devolve a kind of institution, how to devolve a kind of rules and regulations which will regulate the use of the resource, which will coordinate the use of the resource. Because without coordination, without perfect communication among themselves, perhaps each individual thinks that the person is better off by extracting more and more resources from the commons. And this scenario has been defined in the common literature as the tragedy of the commons. The tragedy of the commons is a concept which was developed by Garrett Harding and published in a very popular journal called Science in 1968. In, in his work, Tragedy of the Commons, Garrett Harding describes a very beautiful story. The story goes like this. Let's imagine there is a patch of grazing land or a patch of pasture land and there are many horsemen or many many households who are who are depending upon that grazing land for grazing their cattle and when more than one individuals are sharing the grazing land as i told it becomes obviously a rational decision for each individual but by increasing the number of cattle they are heading towards a collective disaster because when each individual or each household increases their number of cattle aiming that they will get individual benefit they will get household benefits from the commons but ultimately it leads in a collective disaster because the grazing land is simply not sufficient to accommodate beyond a number of cattle so what will happen ultimately that great headings defines is tragedy of the common that the grazing land will be denuded there will be no grass after certain times or there will be no grass available after certain a period of time for grazing so ultimately what will happen that the households will lose their benefit from the commons which they otherwise would have got if they would have coordinated and devised certain kind of institutions to decide how much cattle is permitted to be sent to that grazing land for grazing. So without that decision, without that, that institutional arrangement to make certain laws, make certain rules for deciding, for guiding or for governing the use of those common resources, perhaps resources will get degraded and therefore Garrett Haddon in his work Tragedy of the Commons that all common pool resources, all scenarios of commons are bound to be degraded because the problem that Haddon discusses is a problem of free riding and overuse of resources that each individual is free to maximize their individual profit, individual gain from the common resources because the cost is being borne by the community and the benefit is being shared by the individual. It is a peculiar situation where the individual gains but the cost is being shared by all. So therefore perhaps no one will think of reducing the number of cattle because if we, one individual also takes the decision, let's think that there is one concerned individual and that person, she or he takes a decision to limit the number of cattle but other persons may increase it. So therefore his or her individual decision may be a judicial decision, may be a decision which, which thinks about the larger collectivity, but that individual decision will not result in any kind of collective gain or individual gain if all others are not thinking in the same manner. But in a situation where everyone thinks in a collective manner and makes certain decisions about how many cattle sent to that grazing land, perhaps situation could have been better. So what I'm trying to explain from this example is that in the scenario of common pool resources, what is required is a collective decision making which can evolve, which can design certain rules, certain principles, certain laws for governing, for guiding the use of the resource. So let's again come back to our basic question. Why problems emerge in common scenario? Why in common pool resources, we face this problem of free riding and overuse and degradation. Perhaps problems arise in common resources because of the inherent 
characteristics of the resource. As I told that these resources are characterized by subtractability and excludability and it is because of these two characteristics problems mostly arise in common situation. Subtractability means that one person's use cartels the amount of resource available to the others and that creates incentives to overuse, degrade and deplete the resource. Because as I told that everyone takes individual rational decision which is beneficial for them and therefore they will carry on, they will continue degrading and overusing the resource thinking that others also might be doing the same and therefore their individual decisions will not affect much. The second characteristic that is difficulty of exclusion also means that others can be excluded and therefore free deriding becomes easy because you can't exclude others so therefore everyone is free to, to come and use the resource. So it is because of these two characteristics that we find mostly conflicts or mostly problems in commons. Secondly, problems also arise in common scenario because the flow of benefit is insufficient to meet the demand. Like again, let's come back to our example. The, the example of the village pond that I gave or the example of the pasture land, the grazing land that I gave. The amount of resources available there or in other words, the fish that is available in the pond or the grass that is available in the grazing land is always limited. They are not inexhaustible resource. They are an exhaustible resource. Resource is limited and therefore they cannot cater to ever increasing demands. They can cater demand up to a certain level, up to a certain extent and beyond that perhaps catering the demands of people becomes difficult on the part of the resource. So therefore each common pool resource or each natural resource has a critical zone beyond which any extraction results in availability of the resource or resources are bound to be degraded if the extraction of resource increases beyond that level. And in the present context again with rising capitalism, rising commercialization, rising markets, the sellability of these resources have also increased and that has created an incentive to take more and more fees from the market. I mean think of a scenario where a village pond is used for self-consumption and a village pond where you can catch fish and sell it in the market. So obviously in a scenario where you can catch fish from the pond and sell it in the market that creates an incentive to overuse the pond because you know that once you catch a fish you can sell it in the market and therefore the more fish you catch the more benefit it is for you. The more individual gain that you from the common. So therefore with rising demand in the market with rising availability of marking uh, with rising availability market scenarios common pool resources face difficulties or common pool resources face problems of free riding and overuse.